Hey guys and welcome back to another video. So today's video is going to be teaching you guys how to edit a photo in the style of Inka Williams. This is her account here, really cool account. Um, she's got millions of followers, 1.3 million. So if you guys don't know her, go ahead and give her a follow. Uh, let her know you came from our YouTube channel as well, that'd be great. Um, but what we're gonna be doing is showing you guys how to get this retro film look that she's got in a lot of her photos. Now, for starters, it looks like she takes her photos on her phone and maybe edits in something like ViscoCam. Um, but we're gonna be obviously using Lightroom today to see if we can get a similar effect. So this is the one we're gonna be basing it off here. So lots of grain, um, very retro and vintage. So before I start guys, go ahead and check me out on Instagram, Matthew underscore GKB. That'd be great if you can go ahead and give me a follow as well. Um, save some of my posts maybe if you like them, get some inspiration, leave a comment, tag me in a photo if you want me to check out your account. Um, you never know, I might shout you out on my story. And of course, go ahead and check out Sebastian as well. That's Sebastian underscore JWB. Guys, the links are down below in the description if you do want to go ahead and give us a follow. This is his account here as well. So let's pick apart quickly um, how we can really interpret this style. So first thing when you're doing a retro photo is you want to make sure there's no contrast, or a little bit of contrast, but not much in the image. Flatten out the image, put in some green undertones, which can be achieved with split toning, and then of course add a lot of grain to the image and take down the clarity and make it look a little bit out of focus and blurry. Those are the few key features of retro photos um, if you want to go ahead and achieve that look. So let's go over here. This is the photo we're going to be using. So let's reset this now. Um, now the good thing about this photo is it's ever so slightly out of focus, which is always good when you've got a retro look because quite often in the old retro photos they were a little bit more out of focus and a little bit blurred. They weren't as sharp as they are now. So that's the look we're going to be trying to achieve. So first things first, I'm going to crop this to a 4 by 5 ratio. I think there's quite a lot of empty space um, either side of this model here. So let's just crop this in. Um, that's a little bit better. Cool. So first thing, guys, what I'd like to do is apply some of our film presets. You can grab these down below, the top link in the description, guys. Also, down the top link in the description, go ahead and check it out if you want to learn a lot more about editing in Lightroom. Um, it's our beginner to professional Lightroom course. It'll teach you absolutely everything you need to know about editing in Lightroom. All these um, film looks, everything, landscape, portraits, everything you need to know, even the tone curve. Um, so do go ahead and check that out down below in the description. But what I like to do is apply some of our presets, which you can also get down there in the description, um, just to kind of get an idea, a rough interpretation of the style. So you can see already we're very similar to Inca Williams style here. We've got that retro look. But for the sake of the video, guys, we're going to be starting off um, just doing it from scratch. We're not going to be using presets. So let's just put this back to a 4 by 5 aspect ratio and then start. So first thing I like to do is I like to take my tint down and the shadows up, the whites down, um, and the blacks up. So what this is going to do is this is really going to help soften the image, flatten it out and decrease contrast as well um, with a slider. I'm also going to drop the exposure a little bit guys and um, that's because Inca's photo here is quite dark so we might as well try and achieve a similar effect. Also with vintage photos they are slightly more desaturated so we are just going to drop that off and bring down the clarity as well. Um, let's see, yeah. Actually, I'm going to bring up the clarity a tiny bit because it is a little bit blurred and that will help to kind of focus it in a little bit more. Okay, we'll come back to the tone. Actually, no, let's do the tone curve now. So this is really going to help achieve this film look as well, where what we do is we bring up the shadows um, and bring down those highlights. It just softens the image even more, um, makes it look a little bit more kind of grey and flat. Okay, so that's that. Next thing I like to do when I'm doing this is... Um, you know what, we are going to add a bit of sharpening to this image because you can see here how blurred the image is. And it is always a bit awkward when you're editing a photo when it's completely out of focus. Um, so let's just try and bring that a little bit more into focus. The benefit being as well that it will help us to add in a bit of grain to the image as well. So although um, I wouldn't encourage putting this much sharpening in any way to photos, do it a little bit because it will add in some grain to the image, which is what we want anyway. So let's just turn this off um, and on. Very subtle difference, but it definitely brings the eyes a little bit more into focus. Okay, we don't want to touch noise reduction, guys. We're just going to come down straight to the split toning here um, and add in some green undertones for our shadows. So hold down Alt um, and we're going to drag this along until we find a green color. Greeny blue is always quite a good one. Um, let's try it this green here and see what it looks like and start bringing up um, our shadows 
oh, there's saturation. Okay, that's pretty much, I think, maybe not. Let's push it towards the kind of turquoise. Um, and then let's put in some green into the highlights. Should really help add in this vintage look. Okay, so that's really helped kind of get rid of that um, yellowy background that we had. Um, that looks a lot better already. Let's come up to the HSL sliders now. So um, our orange slider, I think I'm going to bring it ever so slightly a touch to the right, just to add in a little bit more of that green tinge, maybe plus one or two, really not that much. Yellows um, down to the left. Um, let's just have a play around and see which one works best. Okay, that's just looking all right so far. Let's brighten it up. Um, let's do a before and after so you guys can see a comparison now. So this is the before. It's the after, so already there's a lot of difference has been made in the image. We've flattened the whole thing out. What's really going to make the difference though is coming down to our effects and adding in a bunch of grain. So let's do that now. Add in some grain to the image and try and get it on comparison to Inca's one. So Inca, you see, has got so much grain up here, quite big grain as well, and it seems very rough. So we're going to increase the size of our grain and make it maybe a little bit more rough. Um, there we go. This is looking a lot better here. Um, and then you can, if you want, add some dehaze to the image. It'll really make it look very what we can do with the image because this might actually really add in some um, and has been faded by. We've made it look very similar to um, this style here. We've got a very similar color background, skin tone. It's very similar to the wall and her skin tone. And we've got those, um, the green undertones that we have uh, down here in her t-shirt as well. So that's the end of the video guys, we really hope you enjoyed it and learned a little bit more about editing film type photos or retro photos. It's really very easy, um, just a combination of decreasing the contrast and adding in some grain and green essentially and then you've pretty much got a film look. So there we go guys, thank you so much for watching and do go ahead and check out that top link down below in the description if you do want to learn more about editing in Lightroom. And of course don't forget to go ahead and check out myself on Instagram and of course Sebastian and Inca as well, give her a follow. Give me a follow, um, I'd love to see some of you guys over there. So thanks so much for watching guys, I'll see you guys in the next video.